so more recently you've been working on space so uh, yes. a, another framework for for looking at developer productivity I, I think we can we can certainly look at the, the dora metrics as that being one of those things too but mm -hmm. um so so could you could you describe space for us a little bit sure so space came about because i as I was doing a bunch of my work with Dora and Accelerate, a bunch of companies were bringing me in under the auspices, right? They're like, well, we want to chat with you about Accelerate and improving our software delivery. And we want to chat with you about architecture, CI, CD, kind of removing blockers. Many times, very, very technical pieces. Sometimes it was culture, but many times it was very, very technical. And then I would get there and we would spend 30 minutes or an hour on very technical pieces, right? Like how, what's the best way to improve my architecture here? How can I remove blockers in my CD or my testing? Um, and then we would start shifting into, well, how do I measure the improvement in my systems once I implement this? How, how do I know if I've made progress? How can I start thinking about measuring the impact of the work that I've done? And I realized that so much of what was happening was people wanting to have a way to measure their work. And so I started just realizing I was also giving people almost the same advice all the time. Come up with at least, you know, first of all, there's no one metric that matters. This is not, this is not real. Anytime someone tells you this, like request a refund, get all of your money back. All of this is fake. Um, I'm aware of like a single like one metric that worked and they had to go through five or six years of scientific rigorous testing to make sure that that worked. It's circle or no, a, it's a service quality measure. It's not, this is not a thing. It still isn't the best one. Um, so one, there's no one metric that matters. Two is make sure you have at least two to three metrics that are in tension with each other, right? How can they balance each other out? Um, and then three of those two to three metrics, make sure they are along different dimensions so that you cannot just have three different counts of something. Um, and I was like, and then finally, I was like, you know, what I should do is write this down so that instead of repeating this conversation over and over and over again, or copy pasting this email, I can point someone to a paper, which was like kind of a joke, but kind of not. Um, and I realized that so many times people wanted me to help them identify the specific metrics, but many times yeah. um, they could kind of disentangle it themselves, right? Because we many, like a lot of times we don't have the perfect data, but we will get to better data, right? So like, I also could just tell people like, these are the five things you should measure. Dora metrics are, are like a little different because we, we were using survey measures and like they're high enough level, it kind of works. But if you sp want a specific data point, for a company, I need to know what data points you have. So that's where space came from. Now, space is actually a framework that works for almost any type of complex creative work. We wrote it for developer productivity because if I write something too abstract, people are just gonna go cross out and they're gonna understand it. Uh, so I pulled together a handful of friends and we start sketching this out and there's five dimensions. So one is satisfaction, right? Uh, satisfaction and well-being. Are you satisfied in your work, in your tooling? Uh, that one's super powerful because if someone absolutely hates a tool, they are probably not gonna be productive, right? Is it hard to use? Is it high friction? Do they hate it? You know what, why would they lie? And also, why would they lie to you about this? They're not gonna lie to you about this. I will say lie because it's really hard to get this one without a survey. P is performance. What is the outcome of something? So this could be a quality metric, something like that, something something out, outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, a is activity. Now we are finally talking about counts. Number of pull requests, number of commits, number of something, please, no number of lines of code. <laughs> um, C is communication and collaboration. How are people working together? Uh, it could be the searchability of your code base. You know, some folks care deeply about or they're really trying to, you know, do inner sourcing. Uh, could be thinking about coordination costs, right? And then E is efficiency and flow, time through a system. Uh, it could be something like flow state. If you reach flow state, it could be uh, handoffs. 
So number of handoffs is, is a little weird because it could be number if you think about number of handoffs. But if you think about it in terms of efficiency and flow, uh, if you think about something like SRE, how many hops and routes does it take to get to the right person, right? Yeah. Um, so that framework I found helped people think through the general guidelines because then I can say, pick from at least two or three of these categories. So you don't just get, I'm making this up, lines of code, number of PRs, number of commits, never do lines of code, right? Because if you yeah. have three metrics and they're all under A, no, it doesn't work. You have to cover at least two or three of these. You don't need all five. This isn't blackout bingo, right? You don't, you don't need to cover all five. But that way it helps you get a more holistic measure of what's going on. You can see trade-offs that are happening. You're more yeah. likely to pick some good measures and some good metrics. And let's say you start with a metric that's like reasonable. It's not the best one, but you can get started. As your data quality and your data availability improves, you can rotate that out and rotate one back in. Yeah. So, so I, 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 as I was learning about this um, for myself, I, I kind of found this interesting on a number of fronts. This seems on a number of fronts. This seems very different in in some ways. The Dora work, not in a bad way. This it's just very different. So, so the the way that I kind of positioned this in my, in the pigeonholes in my head was that this is kind of. Um, a sort of meta level framework for metrics. So it's a tool to help you pick your own metrics. It's not doing what Dora does, which is saying, here are four metrics that are, you know, in combination are generic measures of, of you know, good software development. It doesn't matter of the technology, doesn't matter what you're building, but these these are good good tools. And the problem in, in general is that finding those kind of generic metrics is incredibly difficult. I I, ref, I, I, rec, I referred to this earlier as you know, it seems to me genius to come up with that model in the first place. But late, but 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 everything, but that's not enough. So 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 knowing that you're being able to release things quickly and that the quality is high doesn't tell me that I'm writing, I'm building the right things. It doesn't tell me that my feature is is useful to users. It doesn't it 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 doesn't tell me it's a nice place to work. It, that comes as a bit of a side effect, I think. But yeah. uh, there's, there's a lot of other stuff that we need to measure as well. And what what? So I think there's another way to, me... to think about this as well. Okay. Um. So, and and part of this will come with me being a little snarky and a little more thoughtful. So one is, um, a lot of people just get Dora wrong, and part of this yeah. is probably my fault, right? Uh, Dora is more than just the Dora four metrics, right? Those those metrics were interesting from a industry benchmarking point of view, right? Yeah. Uh, we discovered some really interesting patterns and those patterns are that speed and stability always move together. They tend to cluster bucket very, very reliably year over year, over year, over year, right? They just, they just do, which is really interesting because you don't tend to see this in cluster analysis. Yeah. Uh, so by that, it means that like we, we see them break out so that, the, the two speed, the two stability, you know, reliability metrics, they always kind of bucket together and we see these breakouts. So you have your, you know, your used to be elite, but you know, your high, medium, your low performers. We see this kind of stratification. Yeah. People really lost, latched onto that. So they, they think that Dora was just these four metrics. Sometimes I joke like there's a whole book. <laughs> yeah. So by that, I mean, let's say you've got your four metrics, you know how well you're performing. I like to say there's, that's signal and then there's action. You get quick signal, how well am I doing? Quick, yeah. and how well did it do compared to last time I checked? Am I trending yeah. up, am I trending down? Am I improving, yeah. am I regressing? But some people are like, well, I just don't like Dora because it, it labels me and then I feel bad. Sorry, but also like, what are, then what am I gonna do with it? That's where the rest of the research program comes in. Yeah. <clears throat> we have, you know, we've talked about this, there's CI, CD, architectural practices, cultural practices, lean management practices, all of these other things. And that's where the rest of the research program has general guidelines right on CI. Uh, there were a couple of technical pieces. There was a behavioral piece <clears throat> that can point you to how to improve. Can give you rough guidelines, right? If you're doing CI right, you got to do these three things. If you're doing version control right, you got to be doing these a couple of things. If you're doing automated testing right, you got to be doing these five or six things. Yeah. 
And so you can kind of work backward to say, to improve my Dora metrics, I've got like 40 things to choose from. Yeah. And you can kind of just look at it. There are several ways you could do like value stream mapping. You could do constraints and out like uh, algorithmic based constraints analysis. You can just say, what do people swear at all the time? Now, this is where space helps come in because we've got our Dora 4, but then you say, now I want to improve these. How do I know if they are improving? How do I track that improvement over time? If I decide to make an investment in my automated testing, as an example, if I decide to make an investment in my uh, adoption of cloud compute, and that's not just like giving Azure or AWS or GCP more money, that's mm -hmm. shifting over to the appropriate architectural practices, right? You can look at those five pieces, but then how do I operationalize them? Right? How do I turn this into a set of metrics that can show up in a dashboard or show up in a report or I can track week over week or month over month? Because now yeah. you're not going to send out a survey every week because everyone's just going to block your email. Right? Yeah, yeah. Now we can't do surveys. We can do surveys like maybe quarterly, maybe. So now this is where you come to space and you can say, okay, for automated testing, what do I want to do? Satisfaction. Right? Or are we willing to ask people maybe a couple times a year if they're satisfied with the automated tooling? Performance. What are the outcomes of my automated tests? Are they reliable? Uh, do I have flaky tests? Do they have to be rerun? How many uh, escape defects do I have? Activity. How many tests are running? How many tests have to be rerun? Uh, C, communication and collaboration. Uh, we could skip it or you could look and see if like people have to ping each other to run tests or find tests or something. Um, efficiency and flow. How long does it take to run tests? Yeah. How often are they being included? How often are they, or like, are they being skipped? Are they being included? That might be activity. That might be flow, right? Are they being included in the flow every time? How long yeah. does it take? Are there delays included? So that kind of captures the your automated tech the, the the a more holistic measure of your automated tests instead of are we using them or not? Yeah, and you yeah. could we could also include some cultural pieces in some of the communication part, which is are people maintaining our automated test suites? Because if they're not being maintained, then flaky tests aren't really going to be improved. Then the overall test runtime won't really be improved because I'll just keep creating bad or leave bad automated tests in there. I won't have a good culture of maintaining and improving my test suites. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I, I, throw them out there for a month and if a couple don't work, then like pull a couple out, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, absolutely. I, 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 I think I would describe that slightly differently, but but I would agree 100%. So, so, so you know, I think that what we're talking about is is that the problem with the so so what I was trying to contrast with the Dora metrics and the and, and using space as a framework is that the Dora metrics are kind of generic and that's really handy but they don't tell yeah. us enough and everything else well everything else that we've thought of so far pretty much um, is contextual it's it's yes. it's it's about those so so the, the the way that I would describe that is is working experimentally we need to select what our measures are and decide what our experiment is you spoke about you know having a hypothesis at the start i'd like to i have a hypothesis that improving my automated testing is going to improve um maybe my dora metric so how do i measure or, or or i have a hypothesis that improving my automated testing is a good thing so how would i tell how, how would i decide that that was the case right. what things do i need to measure to to achieve that and space gives us a tool that helps us choose some measures that it doesn't tell us the answer, but it gives us a route to find the answer, which is yep. an interesting. And, and it's nice because it's it's relatively quick, right? Like we yeah. just ran through that kind of off the top of my head yeah, yeah. in what, one or two minutes? Because many yeah. times we'll default to things that we're used to seeing or we have an availability bias. What's the data that yeah. we have available we're used to looking at, which yes. might've just been test runs of flaky tests or something. But by even just looking at the framework really quickly and just running through and checking off each one and saying, like, you know, we went through C and I was like, maybe not applicable here. Maybe it's just not great. Or maybe we just don't have data. That's fine. But I've covered at least three or four others. Now let me go look. I can time box it to an hour or two and I could say, what data do I have available? Let me make sure I'm covering at least a few of these yeah, dimensions. Yeah. 
Yeah. And if not, and figure not out what, what more data to collect. Number of runs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. It's 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 like the old joke about the drunk drunk looking for something underneath the underneath the street light, you know, because yeah. that's where the light is. But yeah. you know, it's, and we do way too much of that kind of thing, I think, in software. I, I it's the, the that focus on working experimentally, I think, is pretty pervasive in terms. of, to me, at least, in terms of um, my thinking about how to move in the direction of a of a strong engineering stance, rather than just you know, craft, software development as a craft or or something. You know, if we want to be doing engineering, then we should be treating things as little experiments. You know, try stuff out and figure out how we're going to measure it, control the variables so that we can understand the results as far as we can and then carry out the, the, the experiment and try and poke holes in it. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley, a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favourite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>